How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome to GameCron, your number one stop for tips and tricks on your favorite video games. Today we're taking a look at Star Wars Squadrons Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 1. In this Star Wars Squadrons Tips video, we'll showcase the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter. I'll go over some combat tactics I've been using so far to get some great kills with these Starfighters, along with the fact of what ship components I'm using for my X-Wing and TIE Fighters so far. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. I have videos planned for the remaining 6 Starfighters for both the Rebels and the Empire, but for right now, let's dive into our Star Wars Squadron's tips video on the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter. Until the destruction of Alderaan is complete. Let's start things off with the TIE LN Fighter. Now my current TIE Fighter has a max hull of 2480 which is high health, a max speed of 150 which is the normal, max acceleration which is at 348.1 which is high, and my maneuverability is at 52.0 which is kind of low for your standard TIE Fighter. My primary weapon is the Guided Burst Cannon, Left Auxiliary is the Repair System, Right Auxiliary is the Ion Missile, Countermeasures is the Chaff Particles, Hull is Reinforced Hull, and the Engine is the Propulsor Engine. Now I've designed my my TIE Fire for more hit and run type fights. The Guided Burst Cannon for example allows me to shoot guided shots at my enemies while also doing a decent amount of damage. The Guided Burst Cannon is good to use on enemy targets especially if they have high maneuverability. The repair system of course repairs my ship during combat, but one of my favorite missiles to use in this game so far is the Ion Missile. The Ion Missile when striking an enemy target immediately disables their ship for a short period of time. Everything from their weapon systems to their shields to their engines immediately shuts down until your opponent manages to turn their ship back on. This allows you to take advantage of them as they float around in space to either shoot them down or do a decent amount of damage to where either you or your allies can finish him off the moment he gets his ship back working again. Now the chaff particles are very good countermeasures to use not only for enemy missiles but also for enemy mines. You'll start to notice that certain aircraft will drop mines as you're pursuing them to try to shoot them down. Immediately deploy your chaff particles and dive low to where the enemy mine will then instead go after the chaff particles avoiding your ship and the explosion. Bear in mind, chaff particles are best used when you're either flying in a straight line and deploying them either being pursued by an enemy aircraft or you have enemy mines in front of you. My reinforced hull allows my aircraft to take even more damage because I'll be honest here, the TIE Fighter without the reinforced hull is actually a pretty light ship with very low armor. And keep in mind, it doesn't have any shields like the X-Wing does. So getting that reinforced hull does come in handy. And of course what allows me to have high speed and high acceleration is of course my propulsal engine. This engine upgrade allows my TIE Fighter to stay locked on to enemy targets that are flying away from me, allowing me to then use my guided burst cannon to finish them off. Or if I need to retreat, this ship upgrade allows me to get away a lot easier. The ship components that I currently have for my TIE Fire makes it an excellent hit and run fighter so far. Now it's time to talk about the ship components I have currently for my T-65B X-Wing. Now my X-Wing currently has a max hull of 1920 which has high health. Max shields are at 800 which is normal. Max speed is at 101.5 which is low. Max acceleration which is 560.0 which of course is low. But the maneuverability is at 78.8 which is high. My primary weapon is of course the standard laser cannon. Left auxiliary is your repair droid. Right auxiliary is the ion missile. Countermeasures is of course the particle burst. Hull is reinforced hull, shields are ray shield, and the engine is the micro thrust engine. Now currently I have my X-Wing built like a tank. I can tell you right now having a reinforced hull and also ray shields which allows you to take less damage from enemy lasers but a little bit more damage from enemy missiles allows your aircraft to take a lot more damage and stay on the field a lot longer. The standard laser cannon on the X-Wing in my opinion does a lot of damage faster than that of the standard laser cannon that's on the TIE Fighter. So far I've gotten multiple kills with the X-Wing without having to trade out my laser cannon just yet. The repair droid is obviously used for repairing your aircraft when taking enough damage. The ion missile just like I mentioned for the TIE Fighter when striked against an enemy turns off their ship's shields, engines, and weapons for a short bit of time, leaving them helpless floating out in space. Your countermeasures is the particle burst. The particle burst immediately attracts any enemy landmines or missiles inbound on you to where then instead they'll go after the particles and detonate safely away from your aircraft. This is actually pretty important to have the particle burst because you're going to need it for your ray shield. The ray shield is a great ship component to add to your shields for the X-Wing. As I mentioned a moment ago, your ray shields can actually take a lot of damage from any lasers before they drop. Bear in mind though that enemy incoming missiles actually do more damage
damage to now that you have the ray shield. But if you combo this with your particle burst, you'll be able to lose enemy missiles pretty quickly while still keeping your shield up on high. I've actually been able to win fights two against one thanks to my ray shield and my particle burst. My hull is of course reinforced hull. This allows my X-Wing to have high health while also taking a bit of a hit in its speed and acceleration. Which then comes in the micro thrust engine. The micro thrust engine allows my ship to get a high sense of speed while also having high maneuverability. This allows me to stay locked onto enemy targets and keep them in my line of sights a lot longer, allowing my X-Wing to finish them off quickly. I really like treating my X-Wing as more of a tank and my TIE Fighter as a hit and run fighter. These builds so far have got me between 6 to 10 kills per match. But the biggest thing I do have to emphasize is that you need to talk to your team. No matter how good of a pilot you are, make sure you have a few ship components attached to your ship that can actually benefit the team as a whole. The way I have my TIE Fighter designed is that I can easily come in and help allies who are taking a lot of damage and on the verge of death to where I can assist them to either break an enemy off of them or finish the enemy off allowing them to get away and heal. My X-Wing on the other hand is the tank of my squadron. This build allows me to take tons of damage while my allies can sweep around and attack the enemy from behind, but also more importantly, because I have all these other upgrades such as the ion missile and my standard laser cannon, along with my particle burst, I can dish that damage right back at my enemies finishing them off. I will continue to mess around with my X-Wing and TIE Fighter builds, but so far I'm having a lot of fun with these builds. I'll definitely be sharing with you what builds I have for my Y-Wing and the TIE Bomber in my next video, along with what other ship components I've unlocked so far. So be sure to stick around for our Star Wars Squadrons Tips video part 2. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. I'll be doing quite a few tips and tricks videos on the remaining Star Wars ships in this game, but don't forget to stick around because we'll also be doing Watch Dogs Legions, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Cyberpunk 2077 very soon. I can't wait to drop more Star Wars Squadrons videos for you very soon, along with covering those new games, but until then, I'm Mulder, and I'll see you next time in the GameCron. Pleasure.